I'm delighted to be joined today by our newly appointed head boy, Osama. Osama, congratulations on your appointment. Yeah, thank you. And also by our newly appointed deputy head boys, Fasnal and Zofin. And gentlemen, many congratulations on your appointment. And I thought it would be good to meet with them today to discuss some of the challenges and some of the opportunities about remote learning and possibly about the current COVID situation generally. So thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining me today. And Usama, I, I know that you were actually ill with COVID, weren't you, last term? Now, has that experience influenced your attitude towards the importance of everybody following the COVID rules, do you think? Um, yes, very much. I myself thought I followed the guidelines very well. However, I, unfortunately, I still caught it and I see myself to um, become more tougher on the, uh, myself and mm -hmm. be tight with the restrictions which are in place. They just for our safety mm -hmm. so that we can get back into normal life. And I want people to see me as an example to others and that it can happen to anyone of any age and wherever you are, you must stay safe. So did you feel very ill when you got yeah, it? Yeah, uh, unfortunately I had a lot of uh, body pain, fever, mm -hmm. lots of um, uh, illnesses um, due to the coronavirus. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I, I don't want anyone else to experience that, what mm -hmm. I've gone through and everyone must stay safe. Because a lot of people feel it's not very serious for young people, but that's not been your experience then. Yeah, I mean, as I said, anyone can get it. Young people uh, can even get it. And we must stay safe, as I said before. Mm -hmm. And it's only a matter of time. If you do not uh, go with the guidelines, you may catch it as well. Mm -hmm. So would your advice, gentlemen, be follow the rules, stay at home, hands face space, yeah? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. And although it is true that young people would be less susceptible to the virus, mm -hmm. of course, we've got this new strain as well, which is, um, it, which is uh, more communicable mm -hmm. in terms of its ability to spread to others. And although the, the fatality rate with the, with the young people who contract the virus is quite low, mm -hmm. um, the issue comes in with a lot of us who can potentially pass it on to our family, mm -hmm. who are older members and potentially elderly people, um, and they do not, they cannot combat the virus in the same way that our young, younger bodies can, and they're mm -hmm. far more susceptible to it. Mm -hmm. So you have to also be protecting yourself, but more importantly, the other peoples uh, around you that you really love. Mm -hmm. So it's really, that's why you have to really take it seriously. Yeah. Adding on to that, there are a lot of uh, factors which come into place physically and mentally you uh, may not be able to uh, understand without catching the virus, but it's very difficult to cope without seeing anyone for so long, without yeah. human interaction. And also physically, it's a very tough on your immune system. You, you don't feel like eating, but it's a must to survive mm -hmm. uh, through the virus. Yeah, yeah, it sounds really challenging. Luckily, I've avoided it so far. I, I touch what I hope I carry on uh, in that way. And so I think it came as a bit of a surprise to all of us a couple of weeks ago when Mr. Johnson suddenly announced that schools were going to close again. I mean, how did you feel, gentlemen, when, when you heard that announcement? I mean, I mean it's, a, it's, a, it's a little bit unsettling for us because obviously this is our, our futures at stake here. Um, I mean, the, the first time when schools reopened, uh, Mr. Johnson did say that when we, if, if the schools were to reclose, it would be an absolute last resort. Mm -hmm. And for it to have to come to this is quite saddening for us. And especially for those within vital, vital years, for example, in, and exam years, like year 11 and year 13. And you're just thinking about how are these people going to cope mm -hmm. while they're at home? And uh, what's going to happen with their futures? What's going to happen with their GCSEs, their A-levels, their mocks? How are they going to cope? Um, and not only from an educational aspect, like what are they able to do, but also mentally, uh, obviously uh, mental health has been, uh, young people's mental health has been, uh, a large toll has been taken upon that with this uh, lack of socialization with their friends and being confined to their own rooms in front of their screens. And that's also another very important factor to consider, like what's going to happen with, in terms of people's mental health? What are the government going to do for people with these issues and uh, can can the, the NHS also cope with uh, and all these helplines and, 
and charities also cope with people developing these issues. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, it is quite saddening for a lot of us. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of people honestly are, don't know what to do and almost feel like giving up at this point. Mm -hmm. You know, GCSEs aren't going to happen. What's the point in studying? And you sort of just lose all of your push and your drive. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's quite sad to see that almost disappear with a lot of people mm -hmm. as they almost um, give up. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, no, he's uh, covered everything, but uh, as he said, Miss Johnson did say that it was a last resort and we were all taken by quite a big surprise and uh, we coped with it very well, uh, uh, but, but at, at this time now, I think we've done very well uh, and we're going through to the right path, back to usual life where you can interact with other people and just live our day-to-day -day lives. Mm -hmm. Good. So, I mean, we're going to be talking about remote learning shortly and hopefully what we can find there, we can show people a way forward so that even though school is closed to most students, uh, that shouldn't hold us back in terms of our learning. Uh, and of course, this is the second time, isn't it, now that schools have been closed to most students. Additionally, you've had to self-isolate on occasions. And tell me, do you, do you feel any differently this time round about working from home to the way you felt when we had the first lockdown in, in March of last year. Uh, so <clears throat> I feel like uh, we have coped uh, a lot bet better compared to last year. We've taken in what happened back then. We were all taken in by surprise. We, Although the situation at hand, we did our best. I feel like we did a lot better compared to last uh, lockdown. And um, the way we're going it is easier to cope with, uh, work is easier to understand, it's very scheduled, it's at a certain time mm -hmm. and I feel like uh, mentally it's more uh, calming that we have a schedule which we can follow and it motivates us as students to finish the work on time. Mm -hmm. so, so that actually leads me on nicely to my next question which was really have you as learners who are having to learn remotely now, have you noticed much difference in the remote learning offer that you experienced the first time round compared to what you experienced yesterday and today because of course we're two days into the new offer now aren't we? Yeah so absolutely I'd say there's been a massive difference in terms of, of, of how structured everything is and how uh, well planned it all is. So last lockdown um, teachers, students, parents we were unsure of what to do. It's not, it's not something that we'd ever even conceptualise in our minds that we'd have to prepare for something like this. And um, so it came as a shock, it was very sudden. And uh, that's why there was, uh, there's a lot that we can learn from that experience and then apply that to what we're doing now. And that, I'd, say, I'd say that's quite evident in what the school is putting out. And in, in the, for one example is that now children actually or and all teenagers have to actually wake up in the morning and register on Google Classroom, uh, which is quite different from last lockdown where uh, some students may have been uh, still likes to having a lay in in bed uh, because um, because there wasn't any sort of motivation to actually get up and actually have to uh, like register yourself. So that that was really good. And uh, what else has been implemented is that to, uh, teachers are actually there live uh, within Google Classroom, within the chat, uh, which can give direct feedback to you uh, whenever you've got any any questions, any queries, you can ask that directly to them and uh, they are live there with you. And uh, the work that's being set out, it's being set out in smaller chunks compared to last time. It's more manageable for us to, to be able to do that work and it is it is realistic to how much work we'd get on a normal school day. So that's why, actually, a comment from one of my friends yesterday, it actually feels like a proper school day in the and uh, in the times that you're doing everything. Um, so I think, and uh, I think that was really, really good by the school to make it feel like a true, true experience. Well, that's really encouraging, actually, because that's exactly what we were trying to do. You know, having learned from some of your feedback and your parents' feedback following the first lockdown. Uh, but I, I wonder, just thinking about yesterday and today, and your experiences of remote learning yesterday and today, what, what have you what have you found so far most difficult um, about your engagement with remote learning at home? And um, um, Fasno, what, what have you found most difficult about? I would say the thing that I found most difficult within my engagement is pushing myself even further because. In a classroom environment, 
Once I finish the work, I'll put my hand up. I'll ask the teacher, what can I do next? What can I move on to? What can I progress myself further so I can achieve those eights and nines in my GCSEs? And usually I would put my hand up, ask the teacher for those resources so I could work on them. But now in the Google Classroom remote learning experience, the teachers have to cater for everyone in the classroom to make sure that they're able to do their work, making sure that they're able to achieve what they expect you to do. But for some people, their, the work which is set might be easy for them. And then they might say, oh, okay, I'm done this. I don't need to do any more. But those who want to push themselves, they don't really find the resources which they can go to and push themselves further on, which I'll say would reduce your engagement as you're not asking questions, which you usually do when you're stuck on problems such as, for example, a hard question which you haven't seen before. You ask your teacher, how do I go about to solve this? But in remote learning, some people, they usually won't go to ask your teachers those questions because they're not receiving those challenging work which is normally mm. set. Mm. That's really interesting feedback. We'll give that some thought to see if there's anything we can think of to do to, to, to help that. And how about you, Osama? Um, so I see miscommunication with the teacher a very big problem. And uh, I feel like the teacher may have set out the work. However, there may be something missing. An example is uh, yesterday, in uh, one of my lessons, uh, only half the task was there, the other half wasn't. So I had to inquire the teacher, ask for the work, and it just makes it a little bit longer rather than me just finishing the work and moving on to the, the next task or whatever is set out. And I feel like uh, these little things may build up. We, we have to try our best as teachers, as students, to uh, bring the best possible outcome in the remote learning. Yep, really useful feedback. Thank you very much. And how about you, you Zofie? What have you found most difficult? Well, you see, one of my favourite parts of, of school and being in the school environment is the socialisation, uh, social, mm -hmm. social aspect of being in school, being able mm -hmm. to be with your friends. And I think that's really important when it comes to learning and, and improving our potential. I can give an example. If I were to, let's say, do a particular exercise like press-ups and I was completely on my own and there was no one else around there and I was, okay, I'll just do as many as I can, I'll get to a certain amount. However, if I was to do it with competition, for example, with Osama, and, okay, we're going to do it together, then we both increase our potentials because there is the, we have a necessary drive to beat, the, uh, to beat each other and it's a healthy competition. And that, I think, applies quite well to when we're learning and on and answering questions and and doing tests and because we're competing with each other we want to get the highest marks okay and like people there's certain students who set with set which set the bar for other students to follow and serve as role models and that really helps that really helps everybody else and so being within with other students physically and seeing them answering questions seeing them doing work seeing them do well that's a real big motivator for you to also try to try to beat them and then also do well yourself. Yeah, most of us are social social animals, aren't we? we Absolutely. I suppose we learn better in a group. So I can see how difficult that would be. But if we flip that coin for a moment and tell me again, based on your experiences yesterday and, 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 and today, what have you found most helpful? Um, what have you found the most thing helpful? which I would say I found most helpful is the resources which teachers right now provide. For example, a most common one which I see across all my lessons is the pre-recorded lessons which teachers put out. These pre-recorded lessons make sure that they create an environment that we would usually receive in the classroom when the teachers are delivering their presentations. And we're able to also interact with them. We can ask questions and see which work has been set, interact with the questions and those videos allow us to enforce our learning as before we had to just read a textbook and write uh, answer questions of that. But now we're receiving actual verbal learning and we can use that to our advantage to make sure that we perform well. Mm -hmm. that's, that's encouraging. Thank you. And uh, Zofie? So those two uh, really good things which I thought stand, stood out to me. I think one other thing uh, where, which is part of our the schools that strive to make it as as close to a classroom experience as possible is that when I was getting marking and feedback on my work that was through like voice notes so it wasn't just like typed up and like you're reading it which is also good 
but this time it was it was verbal voice notes so you can hear your teacher's voice and how they're how they're structuring their their what their their feedback and it's just really helpful to see exactly where you've gone wrong and uh, hearing their voice is also just a nice thing because you can sort of like relate you can yeah. relate to them because you have that relationship with your yeah. teachers um, and uh, so I thought I thought that was really good again utilizing the technology uh, for a really good cause and um, another thing that I really like is that again this links back to how our day is structured so similarly to how we would be at school if I yesterday uh, I, at period six I had a maths assignment at 3 15 and it, that was the deadline and this is again another difference from the, the previous lockdown now that I have a deadline at the specific when like period six would actually end that uh, removes any any thoughts of procrastination I need to just get on with this however before if I did not have that deadline I could say, you know what, I can put this off for now and I can maybe do it a little bit later. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't have that option now, which is a good thing because I get it done quickly and more efficiently. Mm -hmm. So I really appreciate that. Great word, procrastination, isn't it? That's mm -hmm. one of my favourite words. Um, so yeah, let, let's picking that theme up. Um, you are expected now to be in registration at 8.45 in the morning and then to follow your school timetable. And I can imagine, you know, for the rest of the day, I can imagine that must be quite difficult sometimes because you haven't got a bell to remind you when the next lesson starts. You haven't got a teacher who's going to give you a behaviour mark if you're late and all those other um, things that we have in school to, you know, keep you to your routine. So is there any advice that you could give to fellow students about how they could overcome that challenge? OK, so usually when it comes to procrastination, the hardest thing to do is to get the ball rolling and i like to think of it like a large boulder on the top of a hill okay so getting that first push is is a little bit difficult to overcome that first that first those first thoughts uh, i might want to do something else but once the boulder starts to roll down the hill the momentum is already carrying it forward and that's exactly how it works when you're starting to do work and once you've got past that barrier of procrastination you can go into workflow and you can and you can work for as long as as long as you need to and also while you're working this is some good advice i would completely put away your phone and any other distractions around you okay and a lot of studies have have proved that when you have certain distractions and you're in workflow for if i if i were to if I were to like get a notification on my phone and like start scrolling through my phone while I'm in work, uh, while I'm in workflow, my productivity actually drops by forty percent, and it takes an average of twenty-three minutes to get back to how I was originally working. So that's a massive hit on your productivity and your ability to keep on going on with the work. So I, what I, the best advice I can give is to completely get that out of the way and just put all of your focus on this one thing. Be you, you, but the thing is with procrastination, you're actually actively aware of it, and um, and so you have to you have to sort of you have to sort of beat that and mm -hmm. and just know okay I'm procrastinating now mm -hmm. I'll just get through this and um, another another really good psychological tip uh, which uh, psychologists say is to trick your brain into thinking that I'm going to do this task for five minutes a short mm -hmm. amount of time okay. And your brain thinks, oh, I can handle five minutes of this. And now once you've sat down and done it for five five minutes, you've already got into the flow of things. Yeah. And then you can continue to work mm -hmm. and it's perfectly fine. So those are just some little tips to get over the procrastination yeah. period. Really helpful. A lot of effort into getting started as well. Yeah. So get that momentum going here. Yeah. Avoid distractions. Yeah, some great advice there. Uh, and, and could one of you gentlemen maybe describe a lesson that you had either yesterday or today that you enjoyed the most and explain why you thought it was a particularly good lesson. The lesson which I enjoyed the most would probably be the maths lesson which I had yesterday. Mm -hmm. The maths lesson, it was a very planned out, was thought about the resources which they provide such as the pre-recorded videos which I mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. They were very in-depth, they were able to explain the concept which mm -hmm. was new to the whole class and they were able to explain it very well as if I was in the classroom myself, mm -hmm. as if I was sitting down and the teacher was in front of me. Mm -hmm. I was able to engage with it effectively as there was various questions which I could move on to. 
the opportunity is to have a live discussion with the teacher about any question, for example, about the task or anything else, and the various engagement opportunities which the teachers have given me, which allowed that lesson to be the best lesson which I would say I had. Mm -hmm. so, so, so some really interesting recurring themes coming here, things that you all find most helpful. So very clear explanation, you know, and that's really useful feedback for us as teachers. Video, hearing your own teacher's voice. These are all things that you find particularly helpful here. Yeah? Any other features of your, you know, your the most enjoyable lesson so far that either of you two would like to pick I, out? I feel like um, the science lessons were very well put out. Um, mm -hmm. we, we assigned a task, a, a, a little description with uh, what we had to do in this uh, set period of time, 50 minutes, uh, essentially one period. Mm -hmm. And I feel like there's a lot of resources we can go into to understand and delve into, to, mm -hmm. into the topic further. And uh, there's also a little quiz which we have to do at the end mm -hmm. of every lesson. And I feel like mm -hmm. it's very impactful on our learning. Is, is that kind of quiz summary at the end of the lesson? Yeah. You, you find that helpful yeah. to you? Yeah. Useful feedback for us. Thank you. Anything else that you want to pick out? Um, so I can I can tell that the school has put obviously a lot of effort and time and money into buying all of the different resources. For example, uh, just to touch on that point on the science, there's mm -hmm. actually they've bought licenses to like Collins textbooks, which you can access online, which are massively helpful, especially for a lot of children actually uh, maybe cannot afford these type of resources or it's difficult to come by, but. Uh, the school is obviously trying to trying to come forward and and say it, it doesn't matter like where like what your setbacks are we're going to provide everything for you and make this the best experience possible and um, and we can follow we can follow the, the the teacher's videos and all of that and we can also supplement supplement it with uh, GCIC pod and uh, and TAS and Y and all of these other fantastic technology for learning which the school has tried to implement into our into our lives yeah. so i think i think having a balance between all of these all of this is is really helpful right now so that's good to know that those supplementary resources like gcse pod tasami memorize maths watch um textbooks online those are all things that you find helpful Absolutely, yes. yeah that's that's good to know uh, and so, gentlemen, what advice would you give to your teachers about what they can reasonably, because, you know, we're all human and we've only got so many hours in a day, but what, what, what your teachers could reasonably do to make it even easier for you to work in Google Classroom? The remote learning experience now is good, but it could be even better. For example, in the classroom environment, what we usually have at the end of the lesson, the teacher would ask, how did everyone find it? Was there anything that you were unsure about? Would you want to do this lesson again next time? Uh, would you want to continue this part? Did you not understand this? Did you understand this? So if we were able to implement something like that at the end of the lesson to see how people got on on a topic. So for example, we could they could say on a scale of one to 10, how easy they found the topic, which part they struggled on, which part they understood or were unsure about. Mm -hmm. So impl implementing a feedback session, I would say, at the end of the lesson, would we, we would see how someone got on with the topic and where mm -hmm. we can move on to next. Fasal, that's a really good piece of advice. Thank you. Thank you. Anything that either of you gentlemen wanted to add to that? Uh, <clears throat> no, he's really um, gone into the topic really well. Yeah. Uh, I, the way he's um, brought up uh, about it, I think it's yeah. a really strong message yeah. and I understand where he's coming from. Yeah, brilliant. Thanks. Thanks very much. So I, I always feel that the most effective education is when there's a strong partnership between the, the, the home and school, you know, between parents and teachers. Um, I mean, how do you think parents can particularly help at home with remote learning? It must be quite challenging for them, I should imagine, but how can they the most help, do you think? Um, I would say that parents, uh, they must encourage students uh, and their own children to uh, leave away all distractions such as uh, mobile phones, devices, maybe move your study room or wherever you study into a quiet area where there are no distractions and you can just get on with your work, stay in that workflow. Because procrastination is one of the uh, biggest problems in young uh, children. And I feel like uh, it all starts how parents go about the, the work which are set in remote learning. And I feel like they can give a very big influence to uh, their own children. 
Great, great. That's again some really useful advice, I think, for everybody there. And and I would imagine actually that in in many families, is may well be the case in your own families, uh, or, or not. I'm not sure, but I would imagine that you sometimes have to share devices with your parents, maybe if they're having to work from home, or with brothers and sisters who are being set remote learning by other schools. Um, have you? found any helpful solutions uh, yet to situations where more than one person in the household needs the laptop or the computer at the same time? So um, I myself had that problem uh, in the first lockdown and I scheduled out what time I need the laptop for my work, for my school work and I feel like that really helped and however uh, there were some times where uh, the, something urgent came up or my father needed it or my mother needed the laptop for something important and uh, I feel like this lockdown uh, the government has really realised and communities and uh, people have realised that this is a very big issue so, uh, about 1.8 million people in the UK do not have uh, uh, access to laptops and devices such as that and um, a few uh, uh, communities such as Loot and Link they, uh, and Crisis Aid, they gave uh, uh, laptops to Chorney mm -hmm. and uh, we are giving them out as a result. I myself have got one uh, mm -hmm. and I feel like it's really uh, good. Uh, the school are making sure that no one misses out from mm -hmm. this vital education and I feel like the school have done a very good job. Mm. Yes, and Bernardo's also, they've gifted us yeah. some laptops as well. So your message to government would be invest in devices for, for, for students yeah and, and continue to do that we have received uh, uh laptops uh, from the department for education but we still need more and so that would be a very clear message wouldn't it uh, and uh, just to sort of round off the conversation a bit um although i suspect you probably or rather be learning in classroom in school there must be some aspects of remote learning which you find more enjoyable than being in school? I mean, what would those be? What do you enjoy most about remote learning? I would uh, enjoy the freedom which I can experience from my home environment. Mm. For example, I usually like to get all my work done at one point and then the rest of my time I could have free up. I could work on other stuff then, for example, I could learn outside of the curriculum, mm -hmm. learn ahead of the class, so I'm getting those eights and nines in my grades. So. Because I'm not having to be at the same pace as everyone else mm -hmm. in my class, because the teacher usually has to make sure that everyone's at the same pace, mm -hmm. no one's left behind. But on mm -hmm. an online environment, on a remote learning experience, someone could be ahead, mm -hmm. whereas someone could be behind, but the mm -hmm. teacher can focus on that person mm -hmm. who's behind and make sure that they're going ahead. But for those who are ahead, they have the time, they have their free time which they can learn extra stuff. Mm -hmm. For example, uh, attempt more questions, learn a different topic which will come up in uh, future dates. So, so you feel a, a bit more in control yes. of, your, of your own learning by the sounds yes. of it, yeah? And how about you, Zofina? Anything particularly enjoyable about working at home? So, working from home, it, it has taught me quite a lot in the sense that it's made me more of an independent individual and it's made me a lot more self-driven now because obviously teachers aren't, aren't at my back and uh, to, to push me, I have to push myself to now do the work. Uh, so that's really improved for me and, and I can take these, these crucial skills and, uh, and values and take that to anywhere else in life. Being self-driven, being independent and even when we return back to, well hopefully we return back to normal school, being independent is, is, is fantastic and taking lead and taking lead and so I think it's really, it's really like furthered that because you just, it's a necessity to have to do that now and just, just drive and just drive yourself forward. And uh, that's what I feel that's really, really improved now. And I'm sure a lot of other students can also say the same for themselves. So these skills have really, really got better. So, I mean, there are a couple of very real positives there, aren't they? You know, the ability it gives you to control your own learning more, you know, to do it at your own pace. And then also the opportunity it gives you to develop those independent learning skills and that self-motivation, which of course is what's going to be expected of you at college and at university mm. and in your careers, isn't it? So, so yeah, so it's, it's really good to pull those positives out of the experience, actually. And uh, so again, flip the coin, the other side of that question, what do you miss most about school? 
So what I miss most about school is the um, the fight against each other to get the best possible outcome and always pushing each other to the limit, always exceeding boundaries, trying to get those grade eight, nines and the teacher always pushing you or you see other people doing well, you want to do well, you want to be the best and I feel like that drive, that I miss that so much mm -hmm. competing with my fellow friends and my, mm -hmm. my colleagues and I, I just miss that very much, yeah. And you must miss your friends, I guess, as yeah, well. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Jen, well, that was a really, really interesting and helpful discussion. So thank you very, very much for your time uh, today. And I know that a lot of the staff at the school will enjoy listening to this and they'll take on board your feedback because some of that was very, very helpful indeed. So looking forward to working with you as my new head boy and deputy head boys and also the wider student executive who I'm going to be meeting with, I think, next Monday. Uh, so stay safe, follow the rules and uh, see you again soon. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, gentlemen.